Hello and welcome to the first video for the second module on fractions. In the previous module we did a bunch of arithmetic with fractions, but still mostly fractions with numbers. Now we want to talk about how to handle fractions with variables. And there's a bunch of different things going on. So what do I mean by fractions with variables? I mean fractions like this top thing, any kind of expression with variables and functions, um, roots, exponents, whatever you put together in a fraction. It's got a numerator, it's got a denominator. Here the numerator is square root t squared plus 5 plus t. The denominator is t squared cos t. And we want to be able to deal with these expressions. They come up in, in various places. They're very, very useful in the calculus and the development of, of understanding of functions. Lots of things happen with expressions like this. We want to be able to work with them comfortably. So I want to go over a bunch of things about them, some subtleties, some concerns, some cares, and some operations you can do with them. The first thing I want to talk about is whenever we have uh, expressions with variables in them, we have to worry about the potential for division by zero. So I look at the second, second fraction here, 6y minus 5 over y plus 3. Uh, this is an expression in the variable y. This works for all values of the variable except for y equals negative 3, because if I try to evaluate at y equals negative 3, I get negative uh, 23 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. So if I, I tried to put y equals 3 here, I would get negative 23, and I would get 0 here, and that doesn't make sense. Dividing by 0 is not a thing that we can do. It's not a, an operation that has any mathematical meaning. So when we're dealing with fractions with variables, always somewhere at the back of your mind, you have to be thinking, oh, let's make sure we avoid values of the variables that lead to 0. And that can be complicated, because there can be all sorts of functions and expressions in the denominator um, that, that you have to be aware of. So the first thing is to, to basically avoid division by zero and be aware that variables can lead to division by zero by evaluating those variables at certain points. In the previous videos on fractions, we talked about reducing fractions by getting rid of common factors. And we talked about multiplying fractions, numerator and denominator, by the same thing and preserving them, and all these operations. And most of these operations still work. So the first one I want to talk about is multiplying numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same thing. That still is fine. And that thing that we're multiplying numerator and denominator by can be an expression involving a variable. And often this is a really useful thing to do, to find common denominator, uh, to express a fraction in a particular form that is useful for us, whatever the case may be. So sine z over z, I can multiply numerator and denominator by z squared, and this is the same thing as z squared sine z over z cubed. The only thing I have to be careful about is I'm not multiplying denominator and numerator by zero, because that makes everything undefined. So whenever I'm doing this again, like up here, I'm being careful to think, well, let's make sure I'm not dividing by zero. Let's make sure I'm not multiplying numerator and denominator by something that evaluates to zero. Uh, some terminology that I want to define here. So we, we, I said we'll deal with all sorts of general expressions in variables and fractions. If the numerator and denominator are both polynomials, and I'll talk more about polynomials in the modules on polynomials later in this particular program, but if both the numerator and denominator are polynomials, the term we use for that is a rational function. So a, a and it, like, like rational numbers, which are fractions, rational functions are fractions where the numerator and denominator are explicitly polynomials. So this is a rational function in K. We've got a polynomial K cubed plus 3K minus 4 in the numerator, another polynomial in the denominator. But if even one of them is not a polynomial, square roots are not polynomials, so square root x squared plus 1 is not a polynomial, so this second expression is not a rational function. It's a nice piece of terminology. It's a, a very common piece of terminology that's used in university-level mathematics, so it would be good for you to be aware of it. We can factor things out of fractions and cancel them off. This is sort of like the reducing we did in fractions of numbers, where we have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, we divide numerator and denominator by that common factor to write something in lowest term. We don't really have a sense of lowest terms anymore, that's not a term we use for fractions with variables, because it's not like numbers where uh, numbers have a clear set of factors, we need to get rid of the factors with variables and functions, the situation becomes much more complicated, and it's not clear what kind of factors you want. That said, we can still reduce 
to sort of the simplest kind of thing we can get to. So let's look at this first example. This first example, everything in the numerator and denominator, all of the terms that are added together, have a factor of 2. 2 divides 8, 2 divides 4, 2 divides 2, and 2 divides 10. So I can factor a 2 out of numerator and denominator. So there's the 2 factored out of the numerator. There's the 2 factored out of the denominator. And then when things are factored out of numerator and denominator, and only then, I can cancel them off. And I get a slightly simpler fraction to deal with. And I cannot cancel anything off unless it's a factor of the entire numerator and the entire denominator. Because what I'm essentially doing here is I'm dividing the numerator and dividing the denominator by 2 and dividing the whole thing by 2 so only something only a 2 that is a factor of the entire numerator gets cancelled off by that division only a 2 that is a factor of the entire denominator gets cancelled off by that division give myself a little more space here again this thing that you factor out doesn't need to be a number it can be a variable so in this second example here, the variable t is a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. So t goes into t squared, t goes into 8t, t goes into 4t, t goes into 5t squared. So I can factor t out of both the numerator and denominator. If I factor out the numerator, t times t plus 8, I factor out the denominator, t times 5t minus 4. If you distributed those back in, you would get the original expression. And then I can divide numerator by t, divide denominator by t. That cancels the t up to numerator and denominator. Again, I've done the same thing to numerator and denominator with division. And I get a simpler fraction. It's very, very valuable. If I'm working with variables, I have to be careful, though, that I'm not dividing by 0. And since canceling off is implicitly dividing numerator and denominator by that value, I have to be aware that the thing I'm doing no longer applies if I try and evaluate at t equals 0. Um, a little bit of extra care, a little bit of extra subtlety when dealing with variables, but still the same kind of idea, reducing a more complicated fraction to a simpler fraction by factoring something out of numerator and denominator and canceling it off.